Hello, uh, I am Sopan Malik. Uh, uh, I am working on SMHA Sweden. Uh, today I am going to present uh, the high resolution data simulation and the structure function for the Copernicus Arctic Regional Reanalysis Domain for second generation G2. So before I start to speak, uh, I would like to thank my colleagues Elena and Shawa from for to support this work and uh, obviously our Kara team member, all the team member for different types of support because of, this is a quite, quite large project for reanalysis. So uh, before I start the uh, talk uh, about the reanalysis product, uh, some prelim, uh, initial introduction about the data assimilation. Uh, we know that data assimilation is the combination for, of information from the model and observation to produce best and more accurate initial state or the analysis. So there are different methods are available like variational methods, 3D or 4D bar and Kalman, Ansible Kalman filter and uh, hybrid methods are there. So all the methods has their own advantage and disadvantages are there like uh, variational method we need the uh, we need, we have to convert from non-linear to linear edge using the adjoint method and uh, uh, I've calculated the cost function and uh, using the B matrix climate B matrix like similarly for uh, Kalman filter method, Ansible Kalman filter method. Uh, although it's uh, Ansible Kalman filter method is the sequential method, uh, but uh, sequential observation assimilation method. But uh, uh, we need to localize the uh, each observation, so there is a lot of other challenges are there. Uh, so in this talk, uh, I am going to uh, discuss about the variational assimilation, and we are using the variational 3D word assimilation to, uh, for the Kara analysis domain. Uh, and uh, here the cost function. Uh, I am my main responsibility on this project is to calculate more accurate B uh, background error matrix, which is uh, uh, which is from climatology statics background matrix. So coming to the uh, reanalysis product, uh, uh, Copernicus Arctic Regional Reanalysis is the second generation reanalysis product. It's cover a, uh, uh, it covers a large area to provide the pan-Arctic region, and the information from the pan-Arctic region. This is the first attempt uh, over with uh, this large, uh, huge domain. It's almost one third of the earth uh, one third area of the art cover it. So, and um, the model resolution uh, we are running in three kilometer resolution, uh, 2.5 kilometer resolution with two, uh, 2,880 by 2,880 grid points and uh, 65 vertical levels. So we can see that the uh, this picture, the, this is the two meter temperature and from this picture we can see the, the, the domain size and uh, discover almost most of the part of the Arctic region. Uh, this is the Harmony EPS configuration. Basically, we are using the Ensemble uh, Harmony Ensemble uh, prediction system with uh, model resolution is 2.5 kilometer. Uh, and uh, data simulation, I use three dimensional variational data simulation for upper air data simulation uh, using in situ and uh, satellite uh, data. Uh, the uh, background, initial and background condition are taken from era 5 EDS system with 10 ensemble member. This is the uh, representation, uh, this is the one uh, representation of the temperature at uh, level 65, which is uh, near surface uh, 65 uh, and uh, uh, six hour forecast. Uh, here we can see that the uh, control, one control member and the remaining uh, other nine members uh, with the, from, uh, this is the difference from control and uh, the, each member. So we can see that there is a slight uh, difference is there for temperature at 65 level. So the ensemble spread is quite higher at each different region. 
Now coming to the cal uh, background error uh, calculation of background error matrix, I use the first time first. Uh, uh, this is called the first uh, forecast error statistics. Uh, so background error statistics uh, or the structure function is uh, calculated using the MNC method. This is the popular method, which is based on the forecast error differences actually for different hour. And uh, control variable, I use vorticity divergent uh, spe uh, specific humidity, uh, surface pressure and uh, the temperature. So basically, uh, this fast uh, manage multiple tasks uh, uh, related to the error statistics, including the covering very vari uh, variable from grid point, uh, grid space to spectral space, and uh, uh, determining the vertical correlation from the control variable. The B uh, B matrix uh, is uh, created by perturb perturbation. Uh, uh, the perturbation are generated using the uh, using the Gaussian uh, random perturbation method in entire control space. So here in this study uh, today, I am showing only four different V matrix I have calculated. But uh, for our reanalysis product, we have calculated almost twenty four uh, V matrix for different season and different uh, climate and uh, different climate scenario. So, but uh, today I am going to present uh, only four results of four B matrix and their impact in the, some extreme events. So, first B1 B1 matrix is valid on uh, 2022 uh, 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 January, which is the winter season, and uh, the forecast uh, six hour forecast I use to calculate those B matrix. Total 999 files or forecast files are available with uh, nine ensemble member and uh, so 111 is the um, UTC means uh, assimilation cycle or forecast cycle we can say that. So similarly B2 is for summer season which is on uh, June 2022 uh, and same for six hour forecast uh, and B3 and B4 are also summer season, but the uh, the month is different and the forecast hour, we can see that they different. Uh, I highlighted in bold letter, uh, like B3 is for, I used 12 hour forecast and B4 is uh, 2022 on July month. And uh, the total number of forecast file is very less, which is 360. Uh, to calculate the B uh, structure function. Now, this is a nice uh, plot which uh, which can tell us the importance of the B matrix at different season. So this picture clearly represents the uh, uh, difference between uh, summer and winter B matrix, which we are calculating from the climate structure. This is the percentage of variance, uh, variance of specific humidity that is explained by unbalanced temperature as a function of height and wavelength. So uh, we can see that the in uh, in the summer B matrix at the mid level, tro mid tropospheric level, and uh, the wavelength between 20 to 50 or 60, the humidity uh, percentage of variance of specific humidity is quite high compared to the winter season. And But uh, in winter season, we can see that the surface level, 65, to 50 or 40 level, uh, and uh, when the wavelength is smaller, then the uh, this uh, variance of specific humidity is high. This this is the because of the uh, snow or uh, fog or other uh, term. But the mid tropospheric level, there is no uh, there is not so much uh, uh, variance in terms of specific humidity. Uh, this uh, this figure represents the the percentage of variance of temperature that explained by Bel uh, by Bell and geo potential as a function of height and wavelength. So this is the variation of temperature. So here also this figure uh, represents the difference between the summer and the winter. Because uh, in summer it's clearly the, the variance of temperature is higher because of the uh, presence of humidity uh, or moisture. Uh, whereas the winter, the magnitude is lower. 
although uh, the as i mentioned the domain is quite large and this is the single matrix which cover all one third of the our globe in the pan arctic region so but still it is captured well on the at different wavelength here the background uh, background error standard deviation for humidity here also we can see that the uh, in the winter and summer season, if we focus on the red line, uh, explained temp explain by temperature and pressure, in uh, there uh, also the standard deviation of humidity in summer case is quite higher uh, compared to the winter season. And uh, even the magnitude also, we can see that uh, uh, higher for uh, summer case compared to the winter case. So, uh, so it is always important to uh, calculate more accurate background uh, uh, background error statistics. And uh, now I am going to present what is the impact of these different metrics uh, to uh, for the convect uh, convective scale uh, data simulation as well as the forecast. Now this is a one uh, typical. Uh, date of uh, uh, number of observation assimilated, which is on, on December, 1st December 2019 at 00 UTC. We can see that the, over the uh, Pan-Arctic region or North Pole region, there is a very few numbers of observations is available. And uh, this uh, to, uh, number of observation represents the for different sensors like satellite, uh, conventional data, and uh, aircraft pro uh, profiler. And uh, this uh, right panel represents the cost function with the four different B metrics. So this is uh, uh, quite interesting results. If we see the B1 and, uh, and the other B, uh, B2, B3, and B4, B1 is quite different from other uh, three, three metrics in terms of cost function at different iteration. So here I use the total 60 iteration, but uh, the uh, J converges up to near 15, 50 iteration. Even the number of iteration is not similar for all the B metrics. And uh, in uh, B1, B1 is the winter, winter B metrics. So B, uh, B1 is quite different from uh, the other B2, B3, and B4 metrics. Now this is uh, for further validation. I consider a extreme storm events of our European region on uh, 26th December 1999. It's quite old season. So uh, here we can see that the accumulated rain, three hour accumulated rain. Uh, if, uh, and uh, here I use the B1 matrix to uh, to uh, for three hour forecast. B1, which is the winter winter B matrix, and uh, we can see that the the storm captured well with the B matrix in three kilometer resolution, and this is the uh, the right panel shows the vertical cross section for relative humidity. Here also we can see that the the storm uh, with the up to level forty, the relative humidity is quite high over this cross section. This red line is represent the cross the vertical cross section for relative humidity and this is some static trees over uh, 80 ATH station uh, near the Denmark region because uh, uh, the, the storm location is uh, storm is located there so here I use the B1 matrix uh, for winter B1 and B2 matrix and uh, Calculate the forecast uh, using the forecast at 0, 06, 12, and 18 UTC. So this panel represents the relative humidity from uh, average relative humidity from uh, uh, 2000 to uh, sorry, 1999, uh, December 25 to 28. So this is clearly shows that the error uh, bias bias for B1 and B2 is large compared to B1. This, this tells us that the importance of B matrix because this forecast is based on the winter season and I am using B1 for winter season and B2 for summer season. So th this, uh, this is also a nice plot which tells us the importance of B matrix and B2 bias is 
B2 bias is large compared to B1 matrix. And in terms of standard deviation also, we can see that the difference. Now, this is the mean sea level pressure uh, over the Denmark region. Uh, these, Two eight, yeah, these 18 stations are from uh, conventional uh, uh, station, the AW station I consider, and the uh, average window is six hours. So here, the we can see that the impact of B1 and B2 matrix along with the observation, this right uh, left panel. So observation is quite similar to all the B1 and B2 matrix. But uh, if we see that the uh, impact biases from B1 and B2, here also the in terms of mean sea level pressure, the uh, error in B2 matrix is large compared to B1 matrix. So this is a nice uh, presentation and we can see that the importance of the B matrix as, as well as the high resolution uh, assimilation, uh, high resolution data assimilation about the penalty region. And this is the difference between uh, the wind speed, uh, a three hour forecast uh, time series uh, using the, uh, the top panel is from using B1 and uh, but the bottom panel is the difference between the B1 and B2. Now here also we can see that the at the 26 December at 06 UTC at mid level, mid troposphatic level, the error is quite higher compared to uh, compared to other UTC. Also the mid troposphatic level, other UTC also that there is a quite different difference between the wind speed at different uh, time and at different level. Now coming to summary, so data data assimilation uh, in reanalysis product is always important, uh, uh, and uh, the obviously the assimilation with high uh, of high quality observation is very important. It is always essential to incorporate good quality of observation into the CARA uh, domain. Uh, the challenges obviously included with the observation error and uh, the data thinning because the this polar region the observation error is quite higher compared to other tropical as well as subtropical region and uh, the seasonal variation of b matrix are significant enhance both analysis and the forecast scale so my our next um, my next work will be uh, on leveraging uh, artificial intelligence or deep learning using the uncertainty estimation over the, across the CARA domain and the, using the ensemble forecast. Also, uh, we are working on the uh, wall sky radiance simulation over this region. So uh, these are a few uh, reference uh, regarding the uh, structure, um, regarding the model information as well as the structure function. This, Three are if someone interested to know more about the model configuration, these are the good references. I have mentioned only three, and uh, this is my last slide. Thank you very much. So, thank you, sir.